What's up guys? Welcome to another video on my channel. My name is Diane, you're watching Reptiliatics. I'm here with my good friends Matthew and Brandon. And this is a really exciting day because today we're visiting Canadian Cold Leg. We're at Brandon's facility and we're gonna see some amazing animals here. For those of you that don't know, I got my green tree monitor Sabzi from Brandon. And so it's a really exciting opportunity and pleasure to be here today to get a personalized tour of his animals and the facility here. Hi guys, as uh, Dion said, I'm Brandon Ashton, owner and operator of Canadian Cold Blood, and uh, we are gonna run you through the Grand Tour today. So uh, follow us and have a peek. This is a captive red yellow tree monitor too. So this is one, you can tell I don't really play with them <laughs> too much, but for, for her to, oh yeah, I understand baby, come on. It's not, <laughs> she does not, here, you can come out. Uh, she's no Sabzi, that's for sure. <laughs> she's no Sabzi, <laughs> come here baby. Okay, you settled down. Wow, beautiful animal. So this is a yellow tree monitor, Varanus rising gara. I actually produced this one myself. This is a captive bred and born animal, a little female. She's about two and a half years old now. So uh, hopefully within the new year by summer, she'll be breeding size. I, I, the more I learn, I think that typical breeding age might be from, you know, or maturity age is best probably to between three and four years. Uh, breeding them earlier than that, I haven't really uh, had much success with in terms of good viable clutches and numbers of eggs. So I think going forward when, when, try, when working with these guys and I'm raising up my own babies, I think that it's gonna be probably three, three and a half year mark. You'll notice that, I, maybe you noticed, I, I did have a male in here, I do have a male in here. And uh, you know, I'm gonna probably remove him until, until the three, three and a half year mark as I'm just not seeing, seeing a whole lot uh, in terms of her being ready. So you know, <laughs> that's just an indicator that, that I should be waiting. So anyways, those are the yellow tree monitors, you know, very, very beautiful animals. And one of the things people talk about is how they lose some color intensity in captivity, right? Due to dying mm -hmm. relative to the, the imported animals that you get. And, and I've seen maybe a bit of that. Actually, I, I shouldn't have put her back because I wanted to show you just the difference between that and a green tree monitor, let's say. Mm -hmm. One of the obvious differences was the belly. If you saw the belly, you would have seen that it had a nice orange hue to it. And that seems to be a characteristic of the yellow trees versus the green trees. Very cool, that's a beautiful animal. Yeah, so that's the that's, that's that girl, mm. her, her boyfriend. <laughs> her boyfriend is, uh, is an imported male, just so I can get genetic diversity, mm -hmm. right? I don't wanna obviously be breeding, if I can avoid it, be breeding siblings or, mm -hmm. sibling, or, or uh, offspring to parents. So I did pick up an import male and uh, very hopeful for the new year of that. But like I said, I'm, I'm gonna pull the male out, give it another six months and then put mm -hmm. it back in. And just for people to know here, all these enclosures, like everything we see here, you designed and built yourself, right? So, well, yeah, I mean, for the most part, with yeah, a bit of I, I, I built them all myself, yeah, 100%. Uh, the design is somewhat of a standard design, yeah. although, you know, okay, yeah, but, so, but, but yeah. You, you built these in, yeah, the ventilation stuff. ideas at the back and stuff, and, and the way the lighting's set mm -hmm. up in a gradient, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I kind of came up with that, so, mm -hmm. and then the, the good old bark off of standard, yeah. standard Canadian yeah. trees, you have a system <laughs> that works well for you, clearly, yeah, so. it, it works, and it's. You know, free bark is better than, or is, is <laughs> cheaper cork, than cork, cork bark. bark. <laughs> yeah, I should, I should learn that. <laughs> awesome. Thank cork you. bark is beautiful though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, baby cakes. All right, so. <laughs> we have a very special yeah, monitor okay. here. This is, this is a very, very special monitor. This is a, this is a green tree monitor, Varanus Prezinus. And this is actually Sabzi's mother. Oh, uh, no way. Yeah, what do you think of that, Diane? That is amazing. She is beautiful. <laughs> she was my original breeding green tree female. Still is breeding. She's actually grabbing now. She's quite plump. Um, oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah. 
for some reason, she sees that we have intruders in the shop today. She wants to hide a bit more than usual, but <laughs> if you, you might ask, why is this guy wearing gloves? Well, their claws are like razor blades, and uh, yes. although, it is, although it is Halloween, I don't need blood before <laughs> the evening. No. Beautiful. Wow. That's so special. This is another Varanus Prezinus. This is a male, uh, and this is actually Sabzi's father. Awesome. So he's actually a bit smaller than the mother, isn't he? Or yeah, he's a bit younger. Cool. Young stud. <laughs> <laughs> May I open this? Yeah, or sure. if they... yeah. Thanks. I hope you're the same. Awesome. Yeah, so this is uh, um, a clutch of uh, baby green trees that hatched uh, a couple months ago, I guess now. Um, you consider them siblings, siblings to Sabzi, but from a different clutch, obviously. Um, the latter clutch to her, but yeah, they're they're hanging out. These guys are waiting to go uh, to go to Europe, actually. So very cool. They're beautiful. Yeah. So uh, just with regards to the green trees again, I typically I typically don't like to keep baby tree monitors together in an enclosure, although. You know, from time to time, depending on the number of babies, I may have to. Out of the tree monitors that I would do this with, green trees seem to be uh, particularly easy going with cage mates, whereas mm -hmm. Macrae, the blue trees, I wouldn't dare keep two together in the same cage, at least while they're sensitive in the first couple months. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard the same about black trees and, and we'll kind of find out about that as well, so. Very cool. Let's see if we can get Brutus out. Hey Brutus, what's going on? Yeah, he knows. See, the males are kind of funny because they're used to being captured by me because I will move a male out when females stopped breeding and they're ready to lay eggs so the males don't uh. eat eggs uh, because they are, no they are notorious egg eaters. So whenever I know a female is laying eggs, mm -hmm. I'll pull the male out. You would just get shredded if you weren't like, close. Oh my gosh, I know. Oh, he's beautiful. So and now the blue trees... Correct me if I'm wrong, are the oh. largest of the complex? Uh, or it's not well, necessarily? I think I think Bakari and Macrae have the same capabilities in growth. I used to have like one of my original Bakari males when I was working These with. These are the blacks, right? Yeah, 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 the black. When I, my, my first pair that I picked up, they were big and old and I didn't know, they didn't have any breeding life left in them, but that male was an absolute giant. Wow. And then I, I've i had a, this guy's brother. He was probably, I would say almost one and a half times this big in, oh. in mass. He was huge. I sold him, mm -hmm. right? But he was huge. He was beautiful. If it wasn't a related animal, right? If it wasn't mm -hmm. a related animal, I would have kept it, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I just, I can only have so many of the same bloodline. Sure. So, so yeah, so... Just another look at the nails there, so people understand what's going on, why we wear the gloves. Oh yeah, I know. So, anyways, this is this is a Varanus Macrae, a blue tree monitor. Mm -hmm. If you if you couldn't tell, so he's good. But if this was a wild caught animal, he's just trying to get away, and he's like, yeah. all right, enough is enough. He knows me. But if this was a wild caught animal that thought that it had to fend for its mm -hmm. life, I mean, it'd be biting, and if he got bitten, it would it would leave a mark. That is for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a cool contraption. Well, not contraption, but it's cool how you have your water dishes on like that. <laughs> it, it's good, except uh, it, uh, it, 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 well, no, they don't actually poop in that. Oh, cool. Um, I, I very rarely find feces in that, but it's a cricket collector. Uh, so when I, yeah. when I come out in the morning, that the, the top will have crickets swimming around in it. But the funny thing is with that is that these guys are so smart. The first thing they do in the morning is they come under the light, they heat up a little bit, and they put their nose right down to the water bowl and grab their breakfast. It's like cereal. Oh. Cricket cereal off the top. It's <laughs> phenomenal. It really is. That's awesome. They all do it, too. Every single one will pick bugs out of the water bowl. Wow. So. Very neat. Yeah. Come on. Okay. I know we have company. She will, like, run right up my shoulder, usually. Hey? I can stand back. Oh, man. What's wrong? They're good-looking guys. They're not that bad. Okay, okay. <laughs> she just laid a clutch of eggs, so oh, yeah. uh, she's a little bit leaner too, but okay. You're proving me wrong, girl. She's telling me she's had enough for now. And now these are where you're hatching enclosures, and like you were saying, yeah, so you keep the blues separate. Yeah, so I keep them separate. <laughs> it's funny because these are sort of universal. Ooh, 
Jeez, that thing almost ran out on oh, me. Yeah. These are sort of universal cages for um, any baby monitor, right? People will ask, mm -hmm. oh, you know, why do you have rocks in with a tree monitor and stuff? And I'm like, oh, they actually use them. They, they, they bask with them. Mm -hmm. They hold good heat. Um, and then I do, like this one, I have some bricks down here. I would typically put some rock stacks for... Uh, or Ackies, if this was an Aki cage, I just lean some bark up under the light. I mean, the trick with these guys wow. is to just give them a lot of places to hide. And again, baby tree monitors, they're very, very secretive in the wild. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of let them do their thing. I do get the odd person that buys one and be like, oh man, I thought it's not eating crickets. It's, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's always hiding. And I'm like, that's kind of, kind of yeah. their nature, right? They yeah. do grow out of it. Well, I was worried about like that too. And you yeah. really reassured me that it was a new rodeo for me. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So kind of learn it. You know, and people are like, oh, I don't ever see it eating crickets, and then they get in the habit of feeding it mice all the time and, mm -hmm. and scrambled eggs, and, and that's not the greatest either. But I, I always try to say, listen, they are eating. They're just so smart. They're doing it when you're not there. Mm -hmm. they, they, they are reclusive when they're small. And yeah, I just kind of throw them in there and make sure they have water and feed mm -hmm. them every second day, and they do great, right? I think, I think it's just keeping it simple, letting them do their thing, not trying to force them to do anything, mm -hmm. right? I mean, if it's showing obvious signs of illness or something, then you might want to intervene. Mm -hmm. Other than that, if I'm seeing it defecate and, uh, you know, and, and uh, I check it every once in a while and it looks like it's a healthy body weight, then I know it's growing, I know mm -hmm. it's doing fine. And so I'll raise them up that way for a while. At this size, crickets for the most part. Mm -hmm. Now this one could probably handle a pinky or two once mm -hmm. a week, maybe. Mm -hmm. And that's fine when they're growing yeah. or a breeding female. Um, I tend to avoid feeding any adult males a lot of rodents just mm -hmm. because they'll get fat. So again, a lean monitor is a healthy monitor. Remember that, guys. A lean monitor is a healthy monitor. That's right. <laughs> so... So yeah, anyways, that's just what I see. Um, I don't have any field experience though, or a lot of field experience, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, clearly you have a good system going and it shows and all the incredible captive bred animals you're producing, like that's really a great accomplishment. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. This is a little boy too, he's uh... This is a younger male? Yeah, this is a younger male. I have a pair, uh, a mate for him, and uh, but she's wow. a little small. Beautiful. So just to um, give you a little history on my struggles with the black tree monitors, the mm -hmm. Varanus Picari, I've bred everything, I mean, in terms of most of the common available tree monitors, the blue trees, green trees, yellow trees, over the last five, six years, fairly regularly. And um, for whatever reason, it seemed like an impossible struggle to try and find some decent black tree monitors. Mm -hmm. So I searched Canada far and wide, uh, four or five years ago and found a really big adult pair that was God knows how old, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Had them for a while, they really didn't do anything for me. And then I was able to source another pair last summer and uh, that pair was uh, questionable condition, but when I got them, I was able to, you know, work with them, bring them back and uh, they bred, so I was happy with that. But in the meantime, I wasn't sure if they would breed. And before they had bred, I had a friend of mine say, hey, I've got a few, a few of them came in from Indonesia, which, mm -hmm. would, which would have been the first time in, I don't know, three, four, five years that I had seen them come in. And I was able to get a few really, really nice animals. Uh, they looked young to me, very healthy uh, when they came in. So I grabbed those, separated them all, quarantined them all. And now, luckily for me, I have, you know, I have a decent little breeding group of these. So this is just kind of the start of the hatching and the egg laying for mm -hmm. these guys. So I was really, really happy about that. It was kind of like my unicorn for, for tree <laughs> monitors, right? Because it just took so long to find any reasonable animals. Mm -hmm. Obviously I'm not a fan of importing, but when it comes to getting new bloodlines yeah, or course. diversity or something that I just don't have and is not commonly available, if I have to, I will, you know, I will do it in a limited fashion. I have good animals. We are breeding them and um, hopefully we won't need to get any more wild collected ones. Which is very exciting. <laughs> Which is good. Lennon <laughs> was just saying the exciting news is that after all that work and planning and sourcing animals, he's finally been able to produce the black tree monitors. And it's a very exciting time because they've just hatched in the last few weeks. 
and we're super honored to be here today to see them for the first time. We're also gonna insert a bit of footage he took of the animals hatching, which is really cool to see as well, as well as take a look at them now that they're out and about. Here's uh, the clutch of Varanus Picari from last night. Checked the incubator again this morning. One has uh, nicely stuck his head out. Oh, he's getting a little scared. He's trying to go back in. There's another pip. And the other eggs haven't done anything yet. Very cool, look at him. <laughs> Perfect hatch right there. <laughs> All right, let's leave him alone so he can come out in peace. So the first baby Picari from the clutch, fully out of the egg. Just thought I'd show you a little, little shot of him. Beautiful thing. And uh, when his brothers and sisters hatch, I'll do a family photo. Well, here's the four Bakari babies, huge Bakari family members trying to kill each other apparently, just like typical children. Guys, here we have one of Brandon's first captive bred produce, Varanus Bakari. Correct. Oh my goodness. And it's interesting to see that they do have a little bit of pattern when they're young too. Right? Yeah, they, they, they do. They have some gold speckling, uh, yeah. which, which disappears obviously as they get bigger. I've seen it disappear at regular rates. I think I've actually seen somebody post pictures of an adult that has some slight speckling. Oh, so, cool. so yeah, so these are, this guy's actually doing really well. This is the first time I've really kind of opened this up and pulled him out in a week or so. So mm -hmm. he's, uh, Seems to be eating quite well. He just pooped in my hand, hidden by my thumb. So that's <laughs> so that's uh, that's a good sign. Just, I was really really excited to have these hatch. Of course. You know, I, I don't think they're any more difficult to breed than the other species. It just it was just such a struggle to get mm -hmm. to get the animals uh, that were capable of of allowing this to happen. So now that we'd seen the incredible tree monitors, Brandon took us to another aisle where he was keeping several Australian monitor lizard species he breeds more colorful one. No, and I'll put gloves on for this girl too. Beautiful. So this is a uh, Kimberley rock monitor, Varanus galauridae from the Kimberley region of Australia. I've been working with Kimberleys for a, for a very long time now, probably, I want to say almost 17, 18 years. Um, and uh, yeah, I love them. I mean, I still have them because they are, out of all the Odatria, they are by far my favorite and uh, super prolific species, um, quite capable of laying, you know, 70 to 80 eggs a year for a, for a big female. Wow. Yeah, it, it is really insane. I mean, I've had a female, my most prolific female gave me uh, 12 clutches of eggs in 12 months, ranging anywhere from seven to 10 eggs. And uh, wow. I did get a couple clutches in there that were one 11 and one 13 egg clutch. And then she did lay a 13th clutch well, that clutch was only three eggs, so obviously after that point, yeah, I had to seriously. give her a break. But the, <laughs> the reproductive capabilities of these guys are insane. But, I mean, I, I love these guys because they're in a small package. They have the look of a tree monitor. Their colors are fantastic. Um, and their pattern and contrasting facial markings, tail bands, all of that sort of stuff is... is uh, is makes them kind of the ideal monitor and i mean in terms of biting they don't bite i mean they never bite mm -hmm. um i'm just wearing a glove because again i'm holding a lot of lizards today and i don't want to be cut right up yeah but uh you know red ackies they could bite you pilbarensis they tend to bite you yellow ackies don't really bite kimberly rock monitors i don't think i've ever been bitten by one to be honest and just just the overall sleekness of this yeah animal. they're very just lean insane. and this is a female she's actually gravid right now of course she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She laid a, what did she lay? A clutch of eggs there? Oh, I didn't even record it. She just laid one maybe uh, about a month ago. So she's due to, Very she's due cool. to pop, yeah. Thanks, that's amazing. Yeah. This is a baby Kimberly Rock Monitor, probably month, month and a half old now. Yeah, so just to give you an idea of what they what they look like, what they start out as. They, they hatch at about half this size in terms of total body length. And uh, they actually don't do too bad together as babies, provided you have a decent sized enclosure. Uh, I have four babies together in a three foot enclosure. You know, so I don't recommend keeping baby monitors together if you can avoid it. But again, uh, these guys tend to be- mm -hmm. uh, Combined with- Combined with other babies, yeah, 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 <laughs> so. All right, there you go, Paul. 
Very cool. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a uh, Varanus pilbarensis, a Cobara rock monitor from Australia. This is a two-year-old female, two-and-a-half-year-old female. They definitely have a nice red intense pattern when they're younger, and as they get older, that, that intense red kind of fades a little bit. But this is a proven breeding female. This is an adult female. This is, you know, as big as typically a female would get. So, yeah, I can, I can show you one of the babies as well. Sure, that'd be so. amazing. A beautiful monitor. All right, so this, we showed you an adult Pilbar, uh, Pilbarensis or Pilbar rock monitor. Uh, this is one that's a few months old now, a couple months old that I've been growing up. A little bit of shed on it, but uh, you can see the, the color. This is just entering the intense phase mm -hmm. of uh, color that I would call it. Uh, so they go through this, this really intense red coloration anywhere from five to five months to one year old. It, that just is, is mind blowing. I, I don't see red like that on any other reptile, to be honest, but. Uh, it's incredible, yeah. beautiful. And it sucks because the camera doesn't quite capture the intensity, unfortunately, but you have to see them in person. But yeah, even from what you see here, it's just such a beautiful animal. Awesome. All right. so. This, this was my first venture into monitor keeping. Uh, yellow Ackies, Varanus acantharis. You know, they're, they're now considered to be the same species as the Red Ackies, probably just locality differences. So there's quite a huge variety in the coloration of Ackies, so to speak. Uh, and this is just one of my females. She's currently gravid, as you could probably tell. She's, yeah. she's massive. So yeah, I just pulled her out for this video. But again, Yellow Ackies are one of those monitor species that are very, very hesitant to bite. They're very good pets that way. And I mean, in terms of a pet lizard, they're actually ideal. I mean, they're better captive than bearded dragons for that matter, because they're intelligent. You know, they will sit there without really struggling. They don't bite and they're hardy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're really, really bulletproof. Provided you do a couple basic things, you know, keep them hot and don't keep them too wet. I mean, those are the two critical factors that I find with monitor husbandry. If you do those two things, they're, they're really, mm -hmm. you know, they're really bulletproof and amazing captives. Mm -hmm. Matt actually has a female. I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've had yeah. her for uh, four or five years now. Yes. Yeah. yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah, so uh, for your information, guys, this is, this is the typical setup that I use for Aki reproduction. Um, I have red and yellow Ackies in, in uh, stock tanks like this. These are just standard galvanized steel farm troughs. Um, you know, have a, have a uh, halogen, sorry, not a halogen, a mercury vapor bulb on one end um, for heat and light. And then on the other, we have a nice gradient and I have some, just some items, right? Some standard things, a hollow log, a, uh, I don't know if that's an antique, an antique uh, drainage tile or something, but but yeah, something I found on the farm. There's little holes everywhere. They love it. And then I have a brick under the hot spot, and that brick retains the retains the heat really well throughout the night. And the substrate in there is about eight to ten inches deep, and they will dig under that brick and form tunnels all through here underneath. Um, so they have a little labyrinth under under that brick, especially. Very cool. Awesome. Once he realizes that I have a good hold on him, he's going to start looking to bite. I, I was curious. Oh. <laughs> anyway, this is what you would typically call a red ackee. This is a, a little male. Um, unfortunately, he is going through a shed. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the contrast where the fresh skin is being exposed underneath the shed skin there. Similar requirements to the yellow, obviously. Identical requirements. I breed them the same. There are some distinguishing features I, I notice between the, the localities now, if we'll call them that. Right, I've always found that red ackies laid bigger eggs, much bigger eggs than typical yellow ackies. Interesting. Yeah, and red ackies do have a, have the personality trait of being a little more nippy and biting every once in a while. So I'm, I'm being a little bit more careful carrying <laughs> or holding this guy, but but he's he's behaving. So yeah, so red ackies, yellow ackies, love those guys. And again, they're they're in terms of just their overall care. If you weren't worried about handling them, their care is the same. They make great great pets. And uh, the colors on these guys are fantastic mm -hmm. as well. So really, really nice reds. Beautiful animals. So as if breeding all the monitors awesome. wasn't cool enough, Brandon's also going to be showing us a few of the species of knobtail gecko he's been breeding for several years. I'm going to show you a few knobtail geckos 
And uh, I think we'll start with some pretty nice little levis levis. I'll pull out the whole thing and I can put it down here. And just to give you an idea, this is uh, Neferus levis levis. And uh, some really, really nice red animals I've been working uh, with over the last couple of years. Um, this is a holdback girl that I produced uh, last season. So she's getting ready for this upcoming breeding season. Um, so I'm pretty excited about the nice red coloration in these ones for sure. In the last year and a half to two years, Brandon's also gotten himself into keeping quite a few species of the new Caledonian geckos. Uh, I just started working with these in the last in the last uh, year and a half or so, and uh, I'm loving them. So I've been raising a few of these guys up to see how they'll turn out. And as you can see, they're they're uh, they're turning out quite nice. So I, I uh, I'm excited to be working with some of these new Caledonian geckos as well mm -hmm. as the monitors. You're also getting into the lychees then. You've been, yeah. Well, you've produced a few. I produced. I've, I've, ooh, I've bred uh, lychees now for about a year. Or Very so. cool. Yeah, so this is a little bross lychee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh God, don't let him get tangled in the forest of my mullet. <laughs> Good contrast though. <laughs> oh wow. to hear Alicianus talk. So, so, is he on his way out? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he does not want to come out. Looks like he's almost retracting more back. Yeah, he is. Here. I can feel him coming yeah, towards me. Play. Oh, man. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, buddy. All right, well, we'll leave you. I won't. <laughs> Brandon also has a beautiful breeding group of Gila monsters and beaded lizards. These animals were incredibly fascinating to take a look at up close. Alright, so this is a little kind of hidden project that I've been working with for for a couple of years now. These are Platosaurus broadlii, little flat rock lizards from South Africa, very, very limited geographic range um, in South Africa around Arable Falls. I believe that's how you say it. Mm -hmm. um, love humidity in the wild. They really, really feast on things like flies that come to the water's edge. They actually did a BBC documentary on these guys. Well, not a full oh, documentary, yeah, but a yeah. segment in BBC on these guys. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've loved these guys. Just watching that, their co colors are fantastic. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, just, so many just, different colors on them. Yeah, amazing variability but like look at the intensity and the transition in the blue on their uh -huh. head even right it's just crazy so and these are even full-on adult males i mean size wise they're there but the color intensity the blue will actually saturate the full back they're uh -huh. really really neat so hopefully i can i mean i am breeding them and i i am getting regular clutches of eggs hopefully i can breed them in enough numbers to make them available to others who'd be interested but uh Stunning. but yeah I and mean, a totally social colonial you know lizard you can keep one male and several females together mm -hmm. you know or maybe even two males i just find if you put two males together one male becomes dominant and colorful and the other male like the colors become subdued yeah 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 so uh again learning lots about these guys as well mm -hmm. so and this bin i just pulled them out preemptively this is where i keep them <laughs> no, but this is because if I had to go chase them in the enclosure, I'd never catch them. Yeah. <laughs> so I pulled them out this morning for this. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful. Awesome. All right, guys. So we just finished the tour. And it's just incredible to be here, honestly. Brandon, thank you so much oh, for having us. Like, it was so awesome to see what goes on behind the scenes, all these incredible animals you're keeping and producing. And honestly, I mean, not to toot your horn too much, but it's so praiseworthy that 
you're producing all these captive bred monitors. Like you see them come in while it's and whatnot, but like you really have a good thing going here and it's an honor to own one of your animals. And thanks so much for the tour. It's really a pleasure. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate you coming out. And thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I know that <laughs> I know I've been criticized on my social media in the past because I have a lot of things going on. So having you come out and uh, and uh, you know do a segment helps me as well, and, and it gives the you know your viewers a chance to see what goes on behind the scenes yeah. here if they were interested. So I'm, I'm glad I can oh, do that. Sure. Let the animals tell you what they want, exactly. and if you if you if you know how to listen to them, you'll do just this fine. This man, right? lots of words to listen. We in monitors listening to the animals. Remember that, everybody. Yeah, but no, thank you so much. No, Thank you very much. Yeah. There you have it everybody. Special thanks to the Van Aston family for showing us so much hospitality during our visit and tour. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed seeing Canadian Cold Buds facility. And as always guys, I look forward to seeing you all in another video again soon. See you on Friday.